Ladies, gentlemen, and foodies of all ages, welcome to our Halloween episode. I am the Meat Viking and my wonderful co-host. Hey man, this is Professor Porco and aka Dr. Chef Hubs. We are doing pretty good with uh, the costumes today. Yes. Half of mine arrived, but good old uh, Dr. Chef Hubs out here, Professor Porkloin out here in fine fashion today. Yeah, watch this. I'm going to pull my mic out so you can see the whole entire thing. Strong man going, right? I got the big ass boots. You can start doing the chicken. Get that going. Yeah. yeah. Also helps that you're built like a brick shit house. Well, yeah, that definitely helps a little bit. Yeah. But we figure, get into the Halloween spirit, you know? Yes. I've gone with the Plague Doctor with a glorious beard, because I can't get rid of this. The mustache is coming in pretty good. I just need to trim it up a little bit, but yep. it's starting to curl. Yeah, so. you're definitely a good old strong man. <laughs> <laughs> So for this Halloween episode, we decided that we wanted to do uh, some spooky things. What you got going on in the oven today? I heard you got something spooky. Yeah, man. I'm going to do some uh, ghost brownies. Mm. So I got the brownies cooking right now. So I'll show everybody how to throw that ghost stuff down and make it look all nice and pretty. Good. It's, uh, the ingredients are super easy. I mean, just get brownie mix, cook all that stuff up, get some... Uh, some marshmallows and mm -hmm. some frosting and then just slap that on there and I'll show you how to do it. Actually. It's nice. We're doing something similar to that with a brownie mix, but essentially we're going to make spider web brownies. Okay. Yeah. Are you guys doing that later on? Or are you doing that here? We're going to do that later on. Um, we did do one today and you ever watched that episode or that show on like Hulu called nailed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, they give these awesome ideas to these contestants on Nailed It, and they're like amateur bakers, and you just try and do your best, right? Well, we had like a s'mores dip that uh, you used peeps for, and the peeps were like ghost peeps, and you would make the top layer of the s'mores dip, the ghost peeps. You'd have like little ghosty eyes, right? Well, we couldn't find them. So what we had to do was use marshmallows and chocolate chips. And they didn't turn out like ghosties, but it turned out fucking delicious still. <laughs> well, at least it turned out delicious. Right? Well, before we move on with anything else with this spooktacular one today, what should be the safe word for today? Hmm... Mm. Bat. Be a bat? Okay. That that falls in line with the Halloween. I agree. I think bat is a great safe word to have. Okay. So going on then, um, we didn't really talk about the logo because the last one, didn't it get lost? We uh, The episode that got released today we talked about. Is talking about that. Okay. Yes. Just making sure. Well, you guys can see our new logo. Get that going today. It's going to be up on the social medias. So mm -hmm. take a look. Let us know what you think. I think it's hilarious. I fucking love it. I've already got people asking me, like, so what made you decide to go with that? And I was like, because it got your attention and now you asked about it? Bingo. Yeah. Well, let's bring that forward. Nice Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and take the mask off. It looks like you're sweating. <laughs> well, that and you talk, and then you can't breathe, and then the lenses fog up. <laughs> and so now I'm like, where, where is everything? And I can't see. And also, I got to close this door. All right, he's putting on the Viking thing. There we go. <laughs> Back to my true self. Should have test ran a couple of masks before I went with that one, but whew. Yeah, man, you can take pictures of it and just put it up on the, the social medias. Yeah. So, we talked about our safe word. We talked about that. How are your brownies looking that you're making? Uh, a couple more minutes, man. <clears throat> and then I'll be able to take them out of the oven, let them cool for a little bit. So, probably by the closer to the end, 
when I can finally start making them look all nice and pretty. Because mm. the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to put your, your frosting on a hot cake or a hot brownie because then it just literally melts. And it, it's, it's good if you're going to eat them right there. But if you're going to do designs, you're going to do anything like that, you kind of need those things to cool down just to, just a tad. So uh, it's going to be just a little bit longer. The center is not really done up yet. Mm -hmm. It's still looking a little... Um, little uh, soggy there. A little soggy in the center. Yeah. So. Well, that'll happen. That'll happen. <laughs> so. But the way to test that, though, for people that don't know how to do it, you can get yourself a fork, or you can get yourself some type of knife or whatever, and then you stick it in. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you pull it out, it should be clean. There shouldn't be any type of, you know, cake or brownie mix or anything that you're doing, and that knows that it's done in the middle. Mm. Yeah. Did you get this recipe for anywhere? Because I know uh, the recipe that we use today, we got from delish.com. And outside of the uh, the ghost faces not turning out 100%, because we used marshmallows and chocolate chips on top instead of using the peeps, it was super good. Oh, uh, man. I just Googled, used the old Google machine and said, uh, you know, Halloween desserts. Mm hmm. And it was one of the ones that popped up in like the whole list of things. And I'm like, this looks like it's super easy, but also super good. So speaking of super easy and super good today, I tried something called a Reese's peanut butter cup. And I think that kind of fits for a drink. And Oh yeah. That's didn't you make that? Yeah. All right. Well, tell me about it, man. So Reese's peanut butter cup sounds mm -hmm. delicious. So if you remember, I was talking about screwball whiskey in our last episode. Yeah. So you just take that. You take some Godiva chocolate liqueur and some heavy cream. I just did equal parts of everything. And tell you what, that is a nice treat for this spooky episode here. Another one that we did, um, I got to kind of mess around with the food coloring a little bit more, but I'll get pictures of it is we did these black, margi or black magic margaritas. Simple, you know, your tequila, a little bit of triple sec, and then just uh, some, there you go. Look at them brownies. Look at them brownies. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's not cool. Yeah. So anyways, uh, silver tequila, some triple sec, and some food coloring to make it black. It's a pretty good margarita. That sounds pretty damn good, man. I didn't, uh, I didn't think using the... The black food coloring. Well, we couldn't find straight black, so we did equal parts red, blue, and green and just mixed it up. Yeah, yeah. So That's not a bad deal. So I might have to get, a, get myself some tequila stuff. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a margarita in a really long time. I've been drinking a lot of rum lately. Oh, you're back on your rum kick. Yeah, I've been drinking a lot of rum. I've, I've got this, this uh, Plantation 45 or whatever. And it was when my dad came down, so we would make some Cuba Libres with it. Super mm -hmm. easy. I mean, basically rum, coke, and add some lime. Yep. And uh, smoked a cigar with it, and I've been drinking some Sailor Jerry's just because it's, Cheap. you know, 20 bucks a bottle, and it's not that bad. It's pretty good. So I've, yeah. I've just been drinking a bunch of rum. So I got to get back on my tequila kick, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> It's all good, man. There is nothing wrong with drinking rum. Rum's super versatile. You know, you can do hurricanes. You can do all sorts of fun stuff with that. But sometimes I just like going basic, though. I just like doing rum and Coke. Yeah. That's or, or rum and ginger. Mm -hmm. or, or even if you want a holiday one that's coming up for Christmas or Thanksgiving, do rum and cranberry. Okay. If you do a spiced rum and cranberry, that also tastes pretty damn good. Mm. So I, uh, I've, been, I've just been on that kick. So surprised we're not doing like rum and apple cider. That's a pretty good one too. Yeah. Um, heat up the apple cider. Actually, there was another recipe that I did a while ago where you used Everclear. Ooh. And essentially you take some brown sugar, you take uh, your apple cider, mm -hmm. you heat, you heat up the, the brown sugar. I think it's like a cup. It might be two cups of, um, of brown sugar to like a gallon and a half of cider you heat it up so it's nice and warm. Mm -hmm. You don't boil it. You just steam it up so it, it gets rid of all the sugar. And then you let it cool. 
and throw in the bottle of Everclear. And at that point, you just sip it. Mm, yummy, yummy. So, and that one turns out to be pretty good. It's like apple pie moonshine almost. So I, I did that. I did that around the holiday. I might have to buy myself a bottle. I can get it down here. So I'm going to have to buy myself a bottle and make some of that. The thing is, I, I, the first time I made it, it was good, but it was also really sweet. So I cut the sugar down mm -hmm. because the, the brown sugar is a lot anyway. So you're looking good so far. Were there any other, um, I'd seen something and I thought about trying it, but I was kind of scrapped for time. And essentially what this did, dude did was he took chicken wings, right? And he infused them with like a Bloody Mary sauce. And then he food color coated them black. So they look like bat wings. And then when you bit into it, it looked like it was bleeding I thought that was a super dope plan, but I was too strapped for time to try something like that. Yeah, I feel like that takes a lot of time because you got to first inject it with everything, you know? And then, I don't know, did he fry it afterwards or did he, uh, did he fry it first and then inject it and then get it in the food coloring? If I remember right, he fried them first, then injected them. And then, like, you basically did, um, like, your normal buffalo hot sauce, it looked like. And then yeah. he food colored it to where it was black. Looks super dope. I saw one similar to that, but with spaghetti. Okay. So you basically cook the spaghetti and then you do the food coloring. So it's black spaghetti and you do a, a tomato garlic. Mm. So that looks super cool too. But I just, I figured I'd stick with the, uh, the brownies for this time. Maybe, maybe next year. We'll, we'll do a, an entree instead of a dessert. We can do a spooky entree. Right. And see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, I mean, this was kind of last minute on our part. We talked about it. And then, like, Thursday, I think it was, I texted you. And we're like, so are we actually doing this? And we're like, yeah. And then today I was like, so what are you doing? Because what am I doing? And we still ended up kind of with the same idea with some brownie mix, you're doing ghosties and I'm doing spider webs. Yeah, I know. Right. So <laughs> but hey, sometimes simplicity is just, you can't beat it. You just can't, but you know what I'll have to do is I'll have to, uh, we'll give it a shot. I mean, we have plenty of, of these episodes that we're going to do to mm -hmm. do some of these crazy freaking recipes. So mm -hmm. I'm down for it. Yeah. You know, Speaking of another easy dish, it's one that my mom used to do. She basically took, um, oh, you know those Keebler cookies? They got like fudge stripes. They got the hole in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she would do that, and then she would take a Hershey's Kiss and like melt the Hershey's Kiss to where it would stick on the, the Keebler cookie, and then she would dip it in fudge, and it'd be like a little witch hat, and that shit was delicious. I'm putting them in the in the fridge just to cool them off a little bit. Yeah, you gotta gotta have your brownies cool before you draw on them. Exactly. Perfect. And we'll come back to that. I'll move my camera. Oh hell so yeah. See what I'm gonna do, and hopefully I don't mess it up and be on nailed it like you were with your peeps. <laughs> well, like the thing was is if I probably would have been able to find ghost peeps, it might have turned out better, and it didn't turn out bad. It just like. It almost looked like we did chocolate or like a s'mores dip with raisins because have the chocolate melted. Okay. Yeah. But it was, if you bite into it with a graham cracker, you're like, this is s'mores dip and this is delicious. But you can kind of, it looks kind of like raisins. Give me one second. I'll be right back and I'll actually show you. Yeah, man. Show us. Let's take a look at that. Let's do some stuff. That'll be fun for when he's editing it later because he's going to be like, what the hell were you doing? And if he leaves it in, great. That way you get to see me do some wrestling moves. <laughs> All right, what do we got, man? All right. 
So even with our little light nailed it mess up, <laughs> I mean, this still looks super tasty. Yeah, man. And like, see, these were supposed to be eyes and like a mouth for uh, a ghost. But they kind of look like raisins because of how they melted. But they are chocolate chips. And this was super simple. It was literally, you took uh, two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips, coated the bottom with it, took a quarter cup of cream, poured that over it, put the marshmallows on it, preheat your oven to 450. I think it was done in like nine minutes. And then you just dip a graham cracker in there. It's like eating a s'more. So That's awesome. Good. Dude, it's so good. Yeah, man, I got these huge ass marshmallows. They're mm. campfire giant roasters. Look how big that thing is, dude. Like, so it will be perfect for when I make the the eyes with it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, but still, like I I I was like, all right, where are the big ones at? <laughs> and then I found them, and I'm like, man, this is gonna be perfect for that. So I'm gonna start making some eyes here with some chocolate chips, kind of like what you were doing. But yeah. we'll mine's, I'm not going to be melting mine, though, so hopefully it will kind of stay. Right. I think if I were to go back and do this, I would wait until after I pulled it out of the oven to start adding the eyes and mouth. But, uh, yeah. Super tasty. Super, super tasty. So I think the way that I'm going to do this, I'm going to take the, uh, put my microphone in. So you guys can hear it a little bit better. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little handy dandy poker, all right, which is basically a skewer. I'm just going to make a little hole for the eyes so that the chocolate can get stuck in there, mm -hmm. you know, and then we'll see what happens because I hopefully they will stay. And then I got to figure out what I'm going to do with the mouth. But if you take the take the little chocolate right sorry mm -hmm. about the light we're just gonna stick that right in there that right in there and look i've got some eyes man oh yeah those are some good eyes oh this, this is gonna oh this is gonna be, be great yeah. <laughs> for those of you listening on the podcast i'm sure you can do this with a, you know like a basic toothpick or something it might be a little bit harder essentially what professor Porkloin has is what i would call a kebab skewer yeah, it's a kebab skewer. That's what it is. <clears throat> and you could also take chocolate if you have a piping bag and you can melt the chocolate and then put the eyes on it yourself. But I just have some leftover chocolate chips and I think it's it's easier, you know. We're going to make us we're going to make this guy smile. <laughs> for for this one. I'm thinking I'm going to make a smile and then I think I'm going to make a frowny face, but you got to have your trick and your treat. Yeah, but so it's probably a lot easier to do faces and whatnot if you have the piping bag right. and, and some melted chocolate. But again, I don't care about that stuff. I think I just want to, I'm experimenting with it and giving this a shot and then hopefully it will turn out. But, you know, it's, it is what it is. Well, you know, half the fun of this, uh, this podcast and this show is just having fun and trying different things. You're right. So this is going to be a good start for the brownies. Like I said, you, you just follow the brownie mix. You don't have to do anything crazy. Just make sure that it's cold when, you, when you're going to start doing it. But there we go. Look at this guy. I got him a little smiley face. Yeah, buddy. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to have to do this like eight more times because I'm going to cut the, the brownies up. But then I'll show you what to do afterwards because you're going to need some icing. Ooh. But this dude's gonna be my my little buddy. Yeah, little little crooked, but hey, man, that's all good. So we'll just put him up there. Mm -hmm. So what else you got, man? Well, I told you about the uh, the peanut butter cup. That was my treat. The uh, the margarita mix was my trick. Yeah, and then uh, you know we're gonna work on that. Um, that brownie and spider web mix sometime later this week, and we'll get that posted for you all today. Or not today, but for this episode. Other than that, man, it's just been another day of relaxing and trying to do everything I can. All right. Well, 
Do you know about the history of Halloween, where that came from? I do not. Do you? Would you like to enlighten our viewers on that? I, I do not. I figured you could probably look at that while I'm doing these things with the uh, with the marshmallows. Yeah, let me uh, try to give us a little bit of a history lesson about Halloween. Let's uh, let's Google that real quick. I feel like eventually we got to talk about a Thanksgiving episode and even a Christmas episode. Oh yeah, we're gonna be doing that for sure. So I feel like I should probably mention that now, so uh, we can have that ready. So I'm just kind of reading real quick. Yeah, man, read it. I didn't expect there to be like fucking eight paragraphs of Halloween history, but I'm not seeing like any dates yet. I don't no. think we need to learn about dates, but sure. Right. Well, and you know, like, uh, oh my gosh, Deus de Morta, the Day of the Dead. Dio de los Muertos. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot more lore behind that. And that's kind of, kind of what I was looking for. This guy's a little sad. Look at him. He's got his little freaking... <laughs> you know what? I just thought of this. If you used green marshmallows and took like little pretzel bites and broke them in half and kind of put them in the neck, you could make little marshmallow Frankensteins. I could. Yeah, man, I could. So here's something interesting. To see. Yeah, man, what do you got for me? Well, I didn't know that Halloween originally had games and other activities associated with it. And... Apparently, some of these games used to be divination rituals of foretelling one's futures, especially regarding death, marriage, and children. During the Middle Ages, these rituals were done by a rare few in rural communities and were considered to be deadly serious practices. In recent centuries, the divination of these games have been a common feature of the household festivities in Ireland and Britain. They often appear, have apples and hazelnuts, and self mythology are strongly associated with otherworldly immortality, while hazelnuts were associated with divine wisdom. So I guess, I mean, like, you could consider uh, bobbing for apples one of the games that they would play back there um, in the old-timey days around Halloween time. So, I mean, that kind of makes sense. You know, you get all the apples down, you can... I just always kind of associate that as more of just a typical fall game and not like a Halloween game. You yeah. Know? <clears throat> All right, this guy's just going to have a regular face. He's just going to be straight. He's just going to go, eh, whatever. He's going to be straight up. Yeah, but <laughs> super serious. So apparently... Today's Halloween customs are thought to have been influenced by Christian dogma and derived from it. Halloween is the evening before the Christian holidays of All Hallows Day, also known as All Saints Day, or Hallow Mass on November 1st. And on All Saints Day, November 2nd, thus giving the holiday October 31st, the name of All Hallows Eve. Hmm. And did you ever toilet paper anybody's house when you were a kid? Oh, hell yeah. Did you? Uh, one year I did. One year? <clears throat> yeah. But I feel like kids can't do that this year or these years because, one, people have all those security things like the ring yeah. and whatnot. <clears throat> but still, uh, still feels like people can't go out and have fun anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, you know, I I'm sure being somebody – who gets their stuff toilet papered? That sucks, but also, you know, it's it's not the end of the world, you know. Remember, yeah, also, uh, depending on the rain, it might just wash yeah. to it anyway. Right. <laughs> so, like, remember, you ever see, uh, oh, geez, was it one of the Halloween movies they did, you know, where Mike My Myers is the, uh, the murderer? Yeah. Where they were putting like razor blades and like candy apples and giving them to kid and shit. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. Like, are those the type of people that got their house toilet papered every year? Like, <laughs> like, these are the questions we need to ask. We need to find the answers to these questions. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm going to have to bring this stuff into work tomorrow because I don't think I want to eat all these brownies. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm having that problem too. And yeah. At least they'll make some good pictures. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and at 
least I get to eat some of these marshmallows. Mm, nom, 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 nom. So one of the things that, um, that I'm doing that's not really related to uh, Halloween, but I'm also making some dinner after this. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a nice buffalo chicken sandwich. Ooh. So I got my chicken right now in the <laughs> buttermilk, just hanging out with a bunch of different spices. Mm -hmm. And what I will do is I will basically take that out and throw it in some egg, throw it in some flour with some cornmeal, and then... I'm going to fry that bad boy up. Mm. I'm going to toss it in some hot sauce. I got some blue cheese crumbles. I got some bacon bits. And I got uh, some blue cheese dressing. Ooh, that sounds delicious. And I'm going to throw that on some sandwich stuff. And it's going to look delicious. And it's mm. going to taste delicious. You'll have so. to send, uh, send some Instagram pictures our way and then i will definitely send some pictures to you man so you can see that mm -hmm. so, so remember, kind of let's go back to when we were talking about like pranks and shit when we were kids and if we toilet paper in anybody's houses <laughs> so okay around christmas time i always try and make sure that i watch the nightmare before christmas the tim burton film yeah man and I just kind of, in thinking that thought, I remember there's another film that I always try and watch around Halloween time, and I haven't gotten around to it yet, and it's called The Crow. You ever see that movie? I have seen that movie. Yeah. <clears throat> that, that crazy movie when I first saw it. Dude, that, that is a badass movie. Anybody in the chat who hasn't seen The Crow yet, do yourself a favor. See the first crow. Pretend all the other crows don't exist. Just watch the first one. <laughs> yeah. So that is, a set, and that ties into our topic because essentially he comes, he, him and his bride to be were murdered on, I believe, the night before Halloween. And he gets resurrected a year later and he has the night of Halloween and Halloween to take, uh, his vengeance out on the people that murdered him and his wife. And it's a good, good nineties flick. <laughs> if you're looking at nineties stuff. All right. I think I'll finish these later, but mm -hmm. I can start making some of these, uh, ghosts. Let me finish this smiley frowny face. A couple frowny faces. All right, let's see if I can move this around. I'm going to put that right there so you can see my brownies. And I'm going to need a knife. All right, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, please. Let's see this food. All right. All right. Let's, let's get myself a nice little brownie. I'm going to mm -hmm. cut into that bad boy. Do you like the ends? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. I like them. They're, uh, but I, I'd rather have the piece in the middle, to be honest with you. Well, that's fair. Uh, yeah, I'm like that too. I, I, I mean, if there is an end, I'm going to eat it. Yeah. Oh, I see it. I see it. It's coming out. Yeah, that one fell apart. So I'm just going to. It's okay. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> At least I hope so. Yeah, okay, this one's going to be a little bit better. Just cut a square piece out right of the middle of the brownie pan. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> All right, so you got yourself your little brownie there. Mm-hmm. So what you're going to do, you're going to get yourself some frosting. All right, we're going to open up this bad boy. And we're going to just take a little bit of that frosting. We're going to spread that right on our guy right here. I'm not. Take a little bit more just so that it's right off. And now I'm going to take a little bit of that frosting and spread it on the bottom of your guy. Yeah. 
There you go. Look at that, dude. That is a happy brownie. Right there, man. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You almost don't want to eat them. You almost just want to be You're looking a little ghostly there. Yeah. So you probably could warm up the frosting if you want and mm -hmm. then drizzle it on top, make it look a little bit more ghostly, but this would look just fine. So I'll wind up adding more of those later. Mm -hmm. but you can totally see what we got with this guy right here. He's looking, looking pretty good. Yeah. He's looking a little happy and he's yeah, going to be happy to be eating later. Yeah. <laughs> I think that right there would be a great, a great uh, little something for the kids at the Halloween party, you know, not nothing too over the top, nothing too scary, but also everybody would like it. And, yeah, for sure. Looks like you're about done with that drink, man. I know. Hard part about making good drinks is they sure do go away real fast. What you got over there drinking? Yeah, just a quick rum and coke, man. Like I said, I'm on the rum kick. Rum and diet coke with lime. I don't like the taste of diet. That's fair. I never, I never liked it. Coke Zero, diet, none of that stuff. Yeah. I mean, if I'm going to drink the sugar, I guess I'm going to drink the sugar, but. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Well, man, we got anything else that we're talking about with Spooktacular? I don't think so, man. <clears throat> I think this has been, uh, you know, we talked about two drinks that I did. You did a dessert for our lovely, uh, lovely fans of the podcast. And, uh, you know, for those of you who watch on YouTube, you got to see what he does. And I showed off a, my nailed it dessert that I made today. And we'll get another post uh, later on this week of my spider web brownie concoction. Yeah. You're going to have to, you said you would send me your link to your stuff and then you got all poppy, pop, pop, pop. Oh, I said I'll, uh, I'll send you a picture of my costume. Bat, 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 bat. All right. Well, what about now? I'll You're good now. <laughs> You're good now. So, but uh, yeah, well, what we'll do is we'll take pictures of our costumes. I found all of my stuff off Amazon, super cheap. You know where you found your stuff at? Same thing, man, off of Amazon. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, we'll take pictures for everybody, and we'll get them posted on our Facebook, our Instagram, our Twitter handle, and. I think that's it for today's episode. You know what you want to so. talk about next week? Oh, I don't know yet, but might have to talk about some sandwiches. I think sandwiches sounds like a good idea because there's tons of different ones. Mm -hmm. I might just focus on maybe like a French dip or maybe like a, a, a Reuben, but <clears throat> I think that might be something as a sandwich. All right. So you take it talking about some sandwiches and I think we can work something out with there. But then we'll uh, we'll start thinking about again Thanksgiving and other ones too. All right. Well, uh, all of our lovely ladies and gentlemen and foodies, I've been the Meat Viking with my co-host. Hey man, this is Professor Porkwine slash AKA Doctor Chef Hubs. All right. We're signing Thank off. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>